Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. It is good to come together for the purpose of co-creating. Do you agree? You are knowing what you are wanting? More or less? Your desire brings pleasure to you? When desire feels good, that means there's no resistance within you. But if your desire does not feel good to you, then that means you have some contradictory thought or vibration, some beliefs going on that contradict your desire. Do you understand the feeling of a fresh new desire? When you were little, they all felt like that. Because as you came forth into your physical body, you knew who you are. You didn't feel unworthy. You didn't feel incapable. And when you think back, that's really something. You couldn't walk. You had no teeth. <laughs> you had no way of verbal communication. You were handicapped in a very powerful way in comparison with that which you are now. And yet you knew your value. You felt worthy. You expected things to go well for you. And your desires in those early days felt like we want them to begin to feel again. It was a fresh feeling, a feeling of enthusiasm. A new idea was exciting. The feeling of not understanding something was life-giving. The feeling of wanting more understanding. The feeling of interest beginning to percolate within you. The feeling of expanded ideas, the feeling of not understanding and then coming to understanding, the glee and jubilance that you felt when you were now able to do something that yesterday you couldn't do. As understanding began to unfold within you, that fresh, thrilling feeling of life pouring through you, that's who you feel as non-physical energy. That's who you are. That's what your inner being feels like. That's what we feel like when we flow through you. But as time goes by, as you find things that you identify as your object of desire and you think about them, but then you notice that you don't have them and you listen to others who have wanted them and who have not achieved them without even knowing you're doing it, certainly without meaning to, you develop habits of thought that contradict your own desires. You gather up bushels of beliefs that hinder you. You gather up some that are of great value too. But most of our physical friends still are not understanding the difference in the way the belief that you believe that matches your desire feels and the belief that you believe that doesn't match your desire feels. In other words, most do not realize that you have the capability of sorting that out, that you can modulate the feeling by selectively sifting through and choosing the thought, and you can consciously create your vibrational mix. You can adjust thought by thought with far greater ease than most understand you can achieve a vibrational frequency and emit it deliberately and therefore consciously affect your point of attraction. You are a vibrational being. You are flesh, blood and bone. Yes, you are, but you are a vibrational being. You are a radio transmitter and receiver. And the frequencies that flow through you equal your relationship with your source, the feelings that flow through you equal or indicate the combination of vibrations that you are offering. They show you the mixture of your desires and your beliefs. We've called this gathering the science of deliberate creation because we want you to be deliberate about the thoughts that you think. But then we have recently begun calling it the art of allowing because we want you to be aware of your vibrational frequencies and we want you to consciously 
mold them into good feeling sensations because that is the way you put yourself into the vibrational stance that aligns you with your source and with your desires. If you want more money, but you are keenly aware that you do not have enough money. And when you have lunch with your friends, you talk about not having enough money. And when the bill comes, you complain about how much they are charging you. And over lunch, you talk about how it's always been hard. And you remember how hard money came to your family. And you talk about how difficult it is for them to get by now. And you criticize your employer for not paying you more. And you're irritated with the government who is twiddling with Social Security and you are worried about your parents. All through that commentary, you are beating the drum and activating a vibration within yourself that contradicts your very own desire for more money. Law of attraction is answering your vibration. But most are not offering a vibration deliberately. Most are offering a vibration in response to what they are observing which is good for those who are observing good things, but not good for those who aren't observing good things. When you look at something that makes you feel bad as you look at it, that negative feeling that you feel is your indicator that you are focused on something that is causing an activation of a vibration within you that is hindering your point of attraction. It is keeping you from something that you want. And no matter how justified you are in it, no matter how wrong they are, no matter how inappropriate their actions were and no matter how many people agree with you, your negative emotion means that you are hindering your point of attraction. Sometimes our friends will say, Abraham, your approach is so Pollyanna because I live in the real world and I have to deal with the rent and I have to deal with the terrorists and I have to deal with whatever is happening. And it's hard for me to observe these things that I do not want without having an emotional response to them. And we say, we understand that. We know that when you look at something not wanted, that it doesn't feel good. And we want to say to you, it shouldn't feel good. It shouldn't feel good for you to include in your vibration something that doesn't match your desire. That's the point of the guidance system. That's like the gas tank on your automobile when the indicator reads empty just because that annoys you, you do not ignore it. You don't put a happy sticker over it and say, I feel better now. You want to know. The indicator matters to you. And your emotions are indicators of immense importance to you because they let you know your vibrational content. So, as you begin to recognize that you are a vibrational emitter and that law of attraction is responding to the vibrational signal that you are emitting, then doesn't it become simple when you think about it conceptually that if I offer a vibration that feels good, what's going to come back in response to it will feel good too. We know that makes sense, but we also see that many of you are tripped up on how can there be things around that I see that make me feel bad? Shouldn't I join others to try to control those conditions? Well, good luck on that one. You can't even get everyone to agree on what the condition should be. And even if you can get some to agree, there will be others who do not. So then you say, and this is the thing that trips you up most of all. You say, there is factual evidence of the truth of that which I'm giving my attention to. And we say, so what? And you say, so? It's true. It's important. It's documented. We have statistics. It's in our history books. And we say, anything that anyone manifested, including you, is only the response to your vibrational frequency. So when you say something is true, therefore it has credence, therefore I should give it my attention because it is true, what you are really saying is, I see this thing that in some cases I clearly do not want, but because someone else who clearly did not want it focused on it and attracted it into their experience, I should now do the same thing. I should add to the truth of their misery by adding my misery to their truth. And we say, 
we don't really get the reasoning behind that because we understand the palette that you have to choose from. We understand the smorgasbord of creation that is available to you. And we know that whatever you turn your attention to and achieve vibrational harmony with, law of attraction will bring to you. That is what deliberate creating is. It's about understanding that the way you feel is your indicator of your point of attraction. And the better you feel, the better your point of attraction is. The worse you feel, the worse your point of attraction is. You just cannot get around that. You cannot feel bad and attract good things. And you cannot feel good and attract bad things. So how do these ideas get so switched around to the point that humans, many of them, believe that if it feels good, it's virtuous. If it feels good, it is of value, but... If it feels too good, there's probably something screwy with it. <laughs> because one should not be allowed to feel that good. You wait for the other shoe to drop. And in that vibrational attitude, it usually does. And then you say, see, I told you it was coming. And we say, so you're a prophet. <laughs> It is not hard to predict what's coming when you understand vibration. It's not hard to predict what's coming when you understand the way you feel. We want so much for you to come back around to knowing that if it feels good, it is. Now, sometimes people who really want to play the devil's advocate, and we mean that in every sense of the word, even though the devil is a fictional character made up by insecure humans. <laughs> who want to control other insecure humans. There's a lot of power in fear, isn't there? There shouldn't be because really what fear is, is powerless. We'll talk about that if you want to later, but getting back to the devil. <laughs> so many as they are looking into physical experience, see people living things that they know that those people do not want to live. And so their conclusion is they would not do that to themselves. So something outside of them must be doing it. You get so confused about this point, especially if something is happening to you, that you look for all kinds of reasons to explain why it is happening. Some even go so far as to explain it by saying that people outside of them have power over them. And then you look for evidence to support that as you see police brutality or as you see uprisings. Some even go so far as to say it is something from non-physical that is damning them or cursing them. If you understood source as we do, you would never fashion such fiction because there is only well-being that flows from that which is your source. Source never wields vengeance or offers punishment. For Source understands you are valuable, you are worthy, you are blessed. Source understands that you never get it done and you cannot get it wrong. And that even when you stand in a place that currently feels wrong, that ultimately you will return to what feels right and that you can return now to what feels right with an adjustment of your thought process and a, an adjustment of your vibration and a changing of your point of attraction and a finally letting in of the well-being that is flowing to you always. Some, and they're wanting to explain why things are not going better for themselves or someone else, even go so far as to try to justify it by saying it must have bled through from a past life experience. Even though I know I've kept all the rules in this life, in a past life I must have broken some. And so I'm being punished for something that I cannot do anything about now. How absurd is that? There is no source of evil. There is only a source of goodness. There is no source of the opposite of goodness. There is only well-being. There is only good. There is only value. There is only well-being that flows. You are blessed beings who deserve to live well.